This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. We just recently saw Rex Herman go for a routine hearing in the uh, courthouse with the charges of being the Long Island serial killer, the Gilgo Beach murderer. Another person that's had a lot of attention on her, sometimes more than Rex in the last several months. Asa Elro, his ex, or not ex-wife, his wife still, because the ex has never truly been put there. She did, in fact, file for that divorce, but just never executed it. And now we see her showing up to the courtroom for that uh, hearing uh, just the other week with a camera crew in tow as well. Joining me to discuss this, the optics of all this, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent. When you see this behavior out of uh, Asa Elrib towards her husband, what are you making of all of it? First, the first impression I had was, of course, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, good on the good on, you know, the network that went in and got her was able to, which would be really interesting to talk to. See, as a behavior guy, I'm really fascinated by what did they say to her to inspire her to cooperate with them? It has to be some sort of financial gain from it, obviously. Money. Absolutely, because she's already <laughs> said at the very beginning she's got no money for medical, no money for defense, no money for any of these things. And so that was part of it. At the same time, she has struck me as someone who is not easy, doesn't give her trust easily in others. Mm-hmm. I think she's been wronged, obviously, you know, betrayed by her husband from all allegations. So and also, if the, any of the claims that were made by the people that said they that her husband was doing these swingers clubs and all these things, I mean, she could have had a, a lifetime of trauma bonding, as we j- just were talking about. But she's got nothing else. And so I'd be really interested in talking to the crew that was able to inspire her to cooperate with them and do this and her motivations behind it. I think it gives a unique new optic on her that we didn't have before. It's interesting watching everyone dress up before the cameras, including Rex now in the uh, courtroom. Mm -hmm. Where do you think it's going with it, with a documentary crew following her around? I mean, maybe they don't even know the answer to that right now. Is it just to kind of get the day by day exercises and her life and, dealing with her husband being accused of being the Gilgo Beach murderer? Yeah, it's a unique optic. I mean, yeah. it, people are fascinated by true crime. People are f- out of true crime. They're more fascinated by serial killers than anything else. And we have a unique optic of someone being accused of being a serial killer and their spouse who's claiming innocence and being unwitting. And as all claims coming from mm-hmm. law enforcement, she was. And so how do you, I think that's the interesting story right there is how do you live with a serial killer and not know? I think that's the big question. And I do wonder in this case if having the camera crew around you is a great idea. I mean, obviously, optics don't really seem to phase her whatsoever, judging by her behavior since all this went down and the charges were brought. But it does make me wonder if something with this crew is going to you know, find out some information that maybe she doesn't want out there. I'm thinking of almost how we saw in the documentary The Jinx. That pretty much took down Robert Durst right there with just the mic being left on. Is it a good idea? Do the optics matter at this point for Asa if she does have that crew? I think they do matter, but if they do a good job of it for her, it's controlling the narrative that she is out of control of right now. Because right now there's a lot, you know, you get a couple snippets of her on the news, you get a couple snippets, you know, outside a courtroom, whatever it is. And they were not great. I mean, the optics of her were, you're looking like, oh, you know, what is going on with her? Why her? I mean, it's just, it wasn't a great narrative to begin with of what we're seeing of her. And she just came across as angry Mm -hmm. and bitter and rightfully so, obviously, but it just wasn't a super positive optic of, of wanting to support her. And a lot of that then gets escalated by social media. And social media is going to say what it's going to say. And it's going to, whether it's true or not, it'll stick with some people, not stick with others. And people like us and pundits start making their conjecture. And the victim, her, loses co- total control of that narrative. Yeah. So someone like a, a crew like this comes in and says, listen, here's your opportunity to not just make money for your defense and your children and take care of your health care potentially, but you can start reclaiming the story that is actually true. 
you know, with all its bruises and blemishes that we all have, Mm -hmm. you know, at least it'll be more true, hopefully, to who she is and what happened than conjecture. Yeah, I mean, initially she filed for divorce seven days after all this took place. Most of us were like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you need that. Get an emergency divorce because I'm sure you qualify divorce. for that. But that hasn't happened. She's still there. And she's saying that she wants to go and judge the evidence for herself. Did all the time passing between the charges and now, do you think that softened her a little bit to Rex? I mean, is that an effect of the trauma bonding right there of probably being let down by him many times uh, throughout their marriage and this another letdown uh, to say the least? Uh, But is that the time in this space and the trauma bond that hasn't uh, allowed her to pull the trigger on that and officially get separated from him? Yeah, I think that definitely plays into it. You know, distance and time from the actual event softens our memory of those things. And so that is definitely happening without a doubt. But at the same time, though, you know, I'm telling you that the film crew is telling her you got to go because that's mm-hmm. part of the story. We, you know, we want to capture reactions. We want to capture what you think about the evidence being presented. So she has to go, I guarantee you, because of her contract. Yeah. So whether she wants it to <laughs> or not, she's going. If you want to make the money, if you want to control the narrative, here's what you got to do in order to do that. And we're going to dress you up to do it. You may so, not but- divorce him until the documentary is over. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, so if you're creating a story, that's so we have the event, we have the, you know, the trial that's going to happen now. And in, in in the balance will be innocence or guilt and the divorce. Yeah. Well, somebody has their work cut out for them if they are doing the documentary on this. That would be very fascinating. I think even it's gonna the, be uh, it's going to be someone's life work right there. The, the B-roll, I think, would even be more exciting than even what makes it on the screen or something. Yeah, like that. You know, but I'll tell you, it's going to be really interesting if any of the claims by the, the family's attorney are even close to true about these swingers clubs and all these other things and police and law enforcement being involved. Wow. This is going to be a really interesting story. Without. This is why it's sold and this is why they're there. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.